welcome to the NBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Senzo. Joining me today is Silverquill. I am known by many names, several of which can destroy continents. Oh my. Can you give us an example of one of your names? I was known by the dread terror name, Blinky. <laughs> oh god, no! Oh, Blinky! Oh. Yeah. Was your oh. last name Pi? Oh, unfortunately, we just lost Madagascar. <laughs> oh, why was it not Detroit? Because Detroit goes on forever. Well, at least California. No, you want you want me to kill Babscon? You monster! Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And also joining us is Sapphire Heart Songs. Norman, I'm about to kick your butt, even though I've never been to California. Seriously, man, why do you want to kill Golden Fox and Keyframe and all the other people that live in California, huh? You want to kill Hollywood, man? No, I, I don't want to do that. Was it Florida? I forgot. No, I don't care. You have no excuse for wanting to take down America. Go sit in the corner with all the other wannabe dictators. I don't. You guys are doing it fine by yourself. Yeah, don't, don't you know, uh, but Donald Trump presents you trying to muscle in on his territory. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no. Politics aside, on today's episode, we are going to review. We are going to review season six, episode seven, episode title "Newbie Dash." Original air date May seven, two thousand sixteen. Story by Dave Polsky and Dave Rapp. Written by Dave Rapp. In this episode, Rainbow Dash achieves her goal, which is to become a full-fledged Wonderbolt. Yay! So I think first impressions are in order. Yes, but who do we go? Who goes first? Yeah. Last week I did silver first, silver second, and oh, oh my! <laughs> oh you! Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, Sophie, you first. Ooh. That's how I feel about this episode. Oh my! Any reason? I'm not a fan of Rainbow Dash. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm sorry, Rainbow Dash fans, I don't like that pony. Okay. If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for all the controversy behind it, like with the Wonderbolts portrayal, and if it wasn't for the cringy moment where Rainbow Dash tried to recreate herself as the rest of the main six, this episode would have been just forgettable for me, but no, they had to make it just... Ugh. We could debate all day over how the Wonderbolts are portrayed and whatnot, and whether or not it's just playfulness, like, or host hostility, but I don't care. It's just... I'm going to go back to hissing at the thought of this episode existing now. Wow, you are really, really negative for this one. All righty then, all righty then. And Silver, what about you? I've talked about this episode ad nauseum, it feels like. It has been a, a very hot topic debate for a good while. I even hosted a panel at Everfree Northwest specifically devoted to talking about this episode. It's a curious blend of military fans defend this episode with a passion for it. They view it as a reflection of their way of life. Rainbow Dash fans lament at how she's being changed to, to make the story work, seeming to regress in terms of confidence and uh, skill. I enjoy the piece. I see so much of cultures, not just the uh, the military. But ultimately, I found it was an episode that started off high dragged Rainbow through the mud and didn't really give a sign that she was coming out of it until the very end. And I needed a little more, which is why I can't say it's my it's my favorite, despite the fact that Rainbow becoming a Wonderbolt is truly a watershed moment. And as for me, well, I like this episode. It How do I put this? It's one of those episodes where it shows... Them not being 100% nice. Remember how we mentioned before with how Trixie being not that nice pony, being like, it's all not, it's all not sunshine and rainbows in Equestria. So this has that tone, but all, upon a second viewing, a third viewing, I kind of understand how this goes. And I do understand why military personnel 
cling to this episode. It feels that, hey, you join part of our group, you join part of the family. So there are certain traditions that comes with said family rules and whatnot. With this here, I do understand Rainbow Dash feeling a bit down and the Rainbow Dash fans, well, go to her side and defend her honor and whatnot. So personally for me, I do like this episode. It has, well, cringe-worthy moments. I'm not 100% sure if it's on the same level as Spike. But still, it's one of those episodes where it has a development for certain characters. And with that out of the way, I think we can start with the reviews, proper reviews. So, spoilers are ahead. So, if you have not seen the episode yet, stop now, watch it first, and then come back. And if you're done, welcome back, and let's go on. So, we start off with our awesome blue flyer flying through Ponyville until she spots Scootaloo waving at her, calling her down. And, well, in this moment of exposition here, they explain that the Wonderbolts are coming to Ponyville for their show, and Rainbow Dash has to work because she's a reserve. And we spot the Wonderbolts coming through Ponyville, and guess who comes in for a superhero landing? Oh, she's going to do the superhero landing! She did it! Oh, that is so hard on the knees. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes. (laughs) <laughs> Superhero landing indeed. Uh, I smile at this moment after watching Deadpool and all. <laughs> nah. uh, but still, but like still. Like saying, no, uh, Silver's going to turn into Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> you pay money for that. <laughs> uh, I would go for the opposite way around. Ryan Reynolds being Silver Quill. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. I'm not good enough to be Silver Quill. You want to turn the job over to someone. Well. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think today on the NBS show, let's see how far Norman can stick the knife. No, I'm just saying that they pay you, and Ryan Reynolds the first choice. I mean, second choice. Oh God, I'm, just, I'm thinking, who oh, ain't I? <laughs> oh, so you want to you want to have me represent by the second stringer? <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think Norman's trying to take down America. Oh, shush you. What do you think, Silver? Me? Yeah. yeah, indeed. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, <laughs> I see your treachery, Norman. Uh, and I'm going. You're, you're all nice and stuff at first, but we're the master. We're evil masterminds. We know what we see. <laughs> uh, one slip up and you get the whole world at your back. Ay ay ay. But anyway, continuing on, um, Spitfire comes down and looks for Rainbow Dash and has good news for Rainbow Dash because. Rainbow Dash will be joining the Wonderbolts in the flying, and she's becoming a full-fledged Wonderbolt. And yeah, Rainbow Dash is really excited, and she stopped working. Okay, excited is a tame word. This is joy personified in her grin. <laughs> this is a pony who who has captured the essence of good feels. Bring it up, good, 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 good vibrations. Oh God, Sapphire, you haven't heard that song, have you? No, I have. I had to sing it for a pop concert in choir back in high school. <laughs> nice. Yay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but this has been a long time achievement for Rainbow, for Rainbow Dash. She wanted to become a Wonderbolt since season one, episode one. Or is it two? I forgot. Oh, it's, it's episode one from the very get Ah, yes. The very, yeah, I remember the cloud busting scene. Yep. It was her lifelong dream, and now she's got it. Like, she's in. She's part of the crew. What could I say? It's like, oh my god. Awesome. Rainbow Dash left the show one season later. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, would people be mad? Yep. But (laughs) we feel very excited, Rainbow Dash. We start off at home, where she's packing and telling the good news to all her friends, and yeah, and wondering like, what should she do? Should she put on glasses? Should she act cool and whatnot? And all those Rainbow Dash things. Should she take Spike with her in the suitcase? And getting her wing balm because she doesn't want her wings to get stiff. Let okay. it linger. <laughs> Let it linger. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Oh, and then and then abuse Spike because that's always funny. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Truly, I'm laughing on the inside. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, like, Here, I, I didn't helpful. even notice the spike. I didn't even notice the spike abuse in my first viewing, but then I saw it in like everybody else's review. It's like that's not a word. <laughs> Uh, but still, it's one of those funny things, like a poor spike. Always the butt of a joke. Oh well. But when... No, not oh well. That's terrible. Do you have a better segue? No. Then oh well. Still. So after Spike finally gets stuffed, as so many people <laughs> said he should. <laughs> uh, uh, no, bad silver. Uh, but... You're implying there's a good silver. <laughs> I believe there is. And some people believe in a flying spaghetti monster. <laughs> it's also true. Uh, and now Dusty Cat does. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, we we head off to Wonder Ball's headquarters. We haven't seen this one in a while, so it's really good to see it again. And meeting up with Spitfire, they reminisce about the whole thing about Wonder Ball's. I, I don't really remember. I've seen it, but I don't really remember. It's about stuff. <laughs> Basically, trivia to show that Rainbow took those lessons in testing, testing, one, two, three to heart. Mm -hmm. And also that you should look both ways before crossing the runway. Yep, that is true. I mean, not even runway, the road. This is... Except you have Pegasi ponies who can stop on a dime. Why do they even need that thing? Well, like Spitfire says, these ponies like to show both around when they do a landing. And yeah, looking left and right, cross the runway and we head off to the barracks where they see the original cap of commander something i'm not good at this i should have written written down those names and what they said but yeah now that rainbow dash is in she needs to suit up and head off to the runway and impress her teammates and as per usual rainbow dash forgot the first rule of being a wonder ball looks both ways before crossing the runway <laughs> And with her derping around, she jumps into a trash can. And, and becomes rainbow trash. Crash. Oh, that's well, well, they weren't going to say it, I am. That was actually the first thing that came to mind. Only have Pinky, uh, you know. Say it for us. Back me up later. <laughs> yeah, obvious joke, obvious. But still, we get rainbow crash again. And yeah, uh, there's no one here to blame but herself. And then suddenly she's traumatized. Not really this. traumatized. She's being reminded of her time in flight camp where bullies call her Rainbow Crash because the same thing happened again. And in the flashback... I'm surprised they didn't call her Rainbow Trash. Nah. Also, somebody needs to fire that instructor. That was the first thing that came to my mind when I saw that. Okay, we had a, we had a grand revelation. Time. At Everfree Northwest about this. Mm -hmm. All Pegasi are by default jerks. You have to start a jerk and prove you're not a jerk to get in good standing. True that. True that. I see that. The question so. is, Silver, am I a jerk? <laughs> uh... I plead the fifth. Just tell me. I can take it. All right. You're okay, the fine. jerkiest jerk who ever jerked in the whole jerk world. The the priests of, of the great god jerkiness gathered on Mount Jerk. <laughs> And perform the jerking ritual, oh my, <laughs> where a great storm of jerk gathered together and on that night you appeared in the universe. Oh, I thought that was Toon Greg's story. He, I'm sorry, he, that was he, mean. He was a side project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. There we go. I have now mortally insulted Sapphire, but fear not, dear viewers, at BronyCon, I am slated to die five times over. Yeah. One is by Mostly her. by Lightning Bliss. Even though it was your own fault that you were the one who did the Ebonics, although I enforced it in that one podcast. Not just Lightning Bliss. I've got Eliora mad at me for shipping be there. her. She'll be Eliora. at Nightmare Nights. She'll be at Nightmare Nights. Either so, way, you're going to die. I'm going to die a lot. So I think I need to stand by a few Monster Reborns, um, Premature Burials and whatnot. Yeah, I need to stand by those things. I'm not dead yet. He says he's not dead yet. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we continue on with, well, Rainbow Dash uh, crashing into trash cans. So, yeah, not a good start for Rainbow Dash and her first impressions. And with her memory of flight camp fresh in her mind, she's feeling hurt. Training starts and Rainbow Dash is not doing well at all. 
And yeah, not a good first impression. So we see that she's derping on, not really derping, but she's not hitting every move precisely. And I, I would expect her not to do her best on her first day because doing a trick is not easy, especially an acrobatic trick like this. And I think what's getting her is Spitfire keep calling her crash each time she fumbles. And that really bruises her ego. Oh, yes. It bruises her ego. She's got something to prove. She reacts with hostility towards any other challenge. However, she is trying to learn this within the scope of a day, two days, this entire flight routine, which can't be easy. And this is on her first day. As always, the timing in this world is exceptionally bonkers. You have two days to learn this after you just started. And I'm sure military fans will, will say, oh yeah, you gotta dive in head first right away. Okay. Fair enough. I'm curious how many of you learned flight routines within a day? Well, honestly speaking, right, for Dash's case here, I do have to say that she can do it. She just needs to memorize the patterns and whatnot. True that doing everything in a day is not easy and that's why she has two and with her flying experience she can do it all she needs to focus and in this scene here she's not focusing it's because she's so distraught over the whole name thing what do you expect it's from her heroes they suddenly like call her this name that she had like back in um flight camp yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i've had those moments where i've been out of focus due to other stresses going on in my head that I can't get over right away. So I believe this scene, like in this case. Mm -hmm. And well, the Wonder Bolts here, they expect greatness out of Rainbow Dash because Rainbow Dash said here she can uh, memorize these moves in Lickety Split. Since she can perform the Sonic Rain Boom, this is easy for her. And talking about that, she is in the barracks, um, changing to her civilian wear. And, well... Get naked, naked. Yeah, true that, but we don't try... We try to avoid it. Ay, ay, ay. Well, you, you try to avoid it. I am going DEFCON for ship fix. <laughs> uh, because we have a co-ed gym. <laughs> uh, if you do notice here, it's a unisex locker. Unisex. Mm-hmm. I care because in this universe they don't have genitals. No, oh. no, we don't want to know. True, but you can't say unisex without uni. Uh, <laughs> and there are unicorns in this show. Uh, true, that is all. True. That. Yeah, uh, yeah, but there aren't any unicorns in this scene. How do you know the master race can appear anywhere? <laughs> oh God, no! Screw the master race. I have flight. So do they. <laughs> yes, that is true. Have you seen Starlight? Screw her, she's a cheat and a hack. <laughs> Hexor. <laughs> Hex, I call Hex. Yeah. But anyway, second rule of the Wonder Bolts, worst flyer gets to clean up the whole barrack. Yeah. <laughs> not fun, not fun. But I do understand why though. Well, in a way, that would be sort of a drive to make them do better. Yes, I agree. That is the big argument that a lot of military fans have pushed, that Heckling is meant to improve performance and push people to do better, to not make the same mistakes. Now, on the, on the flip side, there are a lot of sociologists, anthropologists, people outside the military who question the, the efficacy of this tactic. That if you want to build teamwork, the goal should be inclusion, not the exclusion that comes with heckling. Not all nicknames in the military are affectionate case in point oh i was just talking about cleaning up after like everything it's like that'd be the only reason why i'd try and oh, do better but we're at that phase we might as well deal with the elephant in the room mm -hmm. which i do not quite have an elephant sound effect you're <laughs> you're lucky okay <laughs> okay you have... okay no more of that <laughs> you're going to download one for next time though right <laughs> maybe uh, ju just one but here's the thingamajig. I've read a lot of books about occupation in Afghanistan, Operation Iraqi Freedom, all basically stuff told from the soldiers. And there are a lot of nicknames people throw out there. One company that very much disliked their executive officer, their XO, 
they called him the ox, <laughs> as in dumbass. <laughs> and they'd never say it to his face, but it was their group nickname, which in many ways undermined any authority he had, was that they wouldn't take him seriously. Another Marine Force recon named one of their units Captain America. <laughs> Because he stood for what was best and right in in America, and he never and then he betrayed them and said, "Hail Hydra." <laughs> no, he was so gung ho, uncontrollable, and basically hyped up that he drove them all insane and possibly put them at risk. Uh... So the Captain America was more an insult. Again, it's the same idea, nicknames. But what's the critical difference? Context. Guess what? Rainbow Dash doesn't have context. Even when uh, Fleetfoot offers Dash encouragement, you'll get the routine down. She calls her Crash, which blocks the encouragement. And part of that's on Rainbow. She's never been good about reflecting and understanding the context. At the same time, I've grown a little weary of everyone saying the Wonderbolts did nothing wrong. Clearly, if they're lowering, if they're interfering with Rainbow's training, Spitfire in particular should be aware of this and at least explain why they have these nicknames. Well, I can see where you're coming from. I can see, after you explain, I do see your point. And it's kind of the reveal at the end. If they do explain it, then the reveal's gone. Like, Rainbow Dash here is the person who can take the joke. But at the end, after she doubts herself, jumping way ahead near the end, they do explain what happens. Like, they do explain the nicknames and whatnot. Like, Sorin is Clipper. And they do have nicknames like Flatfoot and whatnot. And the thing is, all those nicknames are major derps that they did. Kind of affectionate for their family. They don't tell her their nicknames. We All we hear is Clipper, and that's it. That's the lack of context. Yeah, and here's the thing where yeah. if they do explain it earlier on, it shows the Wonder Balls in a better light. It explains a whole lot of things. It makes things go smoother for the situation here. But you won't have a good ending. Oh, I beg to differ. I think if you... Here's the thing about this this episode. It starts off at the high point. Rainbow Dash is a Wonder Bolt. Ah! And then she is down in the mud, down, down, dragged through the mud, down, 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 down. And then at the very, very end, skipping ahead just slightly, there's the upswing where she becomes optimistic again. But what happens if they all explain the nicknames earlier? Rainbow gets a wellspring of confidence and then goes to enjoy a flawless show and maybe a moment of success for whatever reason. And that ends on a high note. I think that would be a greater celebration of this achievement. Mm, but then you need to change almost the middle part of the episode. I'm willing to make that sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, true that. But still, it's a situation here where what we want and what we're given. But anyway, we head off to Rainbow Dash's home because after a long day like that, she wants to rest. Nope, says her friends because they want to hear everything that happened. Was it a fun day? How was it? Tell us. Tell us. And she does. She tells them that, oh, the Wonder Balls are picking on me. They're calling me Rainbow Crash. And That's how it's the dog. Fluttershy explains Rainbow's sudden uh trauma because she's been called Rainbow Crash several times before, including by Spike, mm-hmm. which I'm sure there was a special prank lined up for Spike that we didn't see. Yeah. He couldn't walk for a week. <laughs> oh, wow. Rarity here gives a good motivation speak here about just being yourself, impress people like us. Like, just imagine all the six of us. We are a team, but we're different in our own way. And Rainbow Dash took it the wrong way. Oh, well, yeah, she, was... she took it the wrong way. And well, at also... our expense. But she, she took it the wrong way. But in a weird way, it is a compliment in some ways to her friends, but also it is bad advice from Rarity. This is a fashionista who's learned to try to stand out from the crowd until spice up your life. But Rainbow actually needs to learn to fall in line with her team. And who wants to take this because this is so cringeworthy for me? I get the feeling I must tackle this. Brave Schmave, I'm just excellent pro. (laughs) But I am the Silva Quill. 
All righty. So, Rainbow Dash decides, yes, I will try to stand out by being exactly like my friends. This can only end well. We will be so, so happy. So, first she starts as Party Pony, the Pinkie Pie. One, I would sign her up for stealth missions, for she managed to decorate the entire place with uh, balloons, with not a single sound to wake the sleeping Wonderbolts, who, I would add, all sleep in the same room. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, no. No. <laughs> I, I am just doing my thing. Yes, you are. And, oh, no. Yes, 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 yes. So she's known as Dynamic Dash, the party pony. And then that doesn't work, so she develops a sudden gap-toothed smile. And her prehensile mane gathers to become forthright Philly. The best thing since Applejack. Oh, God, no. On a personal note here, I was cringing so hard that I didn't really pay attention to the screen. And so when I listened to this, it just reminded me of, hmm, Ashley Ball doing a voice. And is this Blight from Pet Shop? <laughs> yeah. Ashley Ball did play that role. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. But it's just like, hmm, it sounds like Blight now. <laughs> well, there you go. And then, while the Wonderbolts are practicing, suddenly a new intellectual Rainbow Dash st- steps onto the stage. Known as Reading Rainboom, she tries to lecture them on turning to the dark side. No, turning in the air. And when Spitfire starts chewing her out, oh, Rainbow Dash retreats and her mane gets all limpy cute and she's known as Care Mare. <laughs> <laughs> But that's not enough. She's got one oh. last ace in her hole. She's got Rainbow Flash. And she pulls this stunt on Soren and a million ship fix took flight. I thought they were already cooking <laughs> off. They landed, for, they landed for refueling then took off again. Uh. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta throw just a little something in there to keep them aloft. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. I hate my life. Oh, come now. Yeah, it's not bad. So, bad. so we've got Dynamic Dash, Forthright Philly, Reading Rainbow, Caramel, and Rainbow Flash. <laughs> if only she'd done a spike imitation, we could probably have uh, Sapphire lying on the ground, fetal position, <laughs> twitching. <laughs> twitching, twitching. Actually, twitch. I was already laying on the ground, twitching, falling twitch, over, twitch, twitch. flailing. <laughs> But speaking from another point of view here, as just one of looking at the scene here, Ashley Ball did a good job impersonating her crewmates. Oh, yes, she did. Yeah. Yeah, here's the funny thing. First time I saw it, my reactions was very similar. Then I watched it again, and I realized that while she is flanderizing her friends to no end, she's also l- listing the very best they bring to the group. She recognizes their talents. Hmm. That's true too, but from my point of view, I see it as Ashley Ball being very talented here. Everything's scripted, but just imagine the direction that she needs to go. Okay, she needs to be hyper, but she doesn't need to be way too hyper that it mimics, um, who's her name now? Um, Fetishized VA? Andrea Lipman. Andrea Lipman? Yeah doesn't really mimic 100%, but you still need to be there. And now you need to do Applejack, but in Rainbow Dash's voice. Like, how do? Because she does Applejack at the same time too. To me, this is a very interesting scene to look and dissect in terms of how a VA does work. I agree with you too, but I don't care. I just want to move on from the cringe. Oh, yes. Check it then. Check it time. Oh, or should we... Maybe we should talk more about the main styles for ah. each. As she, it's so prehensile. Ra- Rainbow, Rainbow may indeed become a secret agent with her predisposition to mimic other main styles. She can mimic main styles, but she can't diet on the spot. Oh, You'd be surprised. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. She could be a changeling. Actually, she should probably spike her mane to look like a ch- very flamboyant changeling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they are extremely flamboyant. <laughs> uh, but anyway, jacket time. Jacket time. Yes, she has a jacket. Huzzah! 
It's the same style as Windriders. Ha, ha, meh. Hey, one of those aviator jackets are cool, yo. Oh, steps on. You trying to step in on my ebonics? <laughs> no, not really. Oh, you best oh, step yeah, off, I I was just, I just realized I got out of speaking ebonics. Wee! Yay! <laughs> it all be spreading, dogs. <laughs> yo. <laughs> Y'all be getting with the hip thing. I... I said I won't go away with getting out of it because remember Silver last week? Bet. Bet? But which bet? I've I got have... a lot of bets going. I want my wings back, by the way. Dog. Too bad. I hope you enjoy your Earth Pony status. <laughs> but anywho, she's got her name tag, and that's the first time Spitfire explains they all get their name tags on the jacket. Hence, we are introduced to Clipper, a.k.a. Soren. A.k.a. Why aren't you using these names more often? Here's the thing where it comes to what we see and what we don't see. And what we see here is they don't say the names that much. What we don't see is probably they do. And it's not on screen. But anyway, thank you, Silver, for taking that part on. Now we get to the performance show. Yeah. And, wow, Rainbow Dash has many, many good ideas, but this is not one of them. Especially since it's unneeded. I mean, ugh, we got some current events going on where a blue angel crashed. Uh... Oh, no, no. It was a Thunderbird who crashed. Thunderbolt who crashed. It survived a blue angel who crashed and died. Oh, no. Oh. St- stunt flying is exceptionally dangerous and requires tremendous skill. And that's when you have a plane. Now imagine if you're flying around Sans the Plane. That's the Wonderbolts. And Rainbow, amazingly, did master the performance in just two days. She doesn't even... The sad thing is she doesn't even need this stunt. But the thing about the stunt that she's doing here... And by the way, the stunt is... Scootaloo rides in on her scooter, kicks a thundercloud, and make it go bang to make Rainbow Dash stand out more. But it didn't work out that way. No. But anyway, Rainbow Dash does the work well here, and no, she didn't really need to stand out. But before that, Rainbow Dash asked for assistance from Scootaloo with her crazy plan, which is, well, I mentioned before. So with that, the performance goes well, really well. Rainbow Dash memorized every move in two days, and everybody's at wow. Um, does Rainbow Dash have her rainbow streak when she performs? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Well, she's in full regale, but I don't think she's quite going fast enough to have the rainbow streak. Mm, let me see here. I, I don't think so. She just ends up with dust clouds. Yeah, dust clouds. I think is part of a uniform, maybe. But anyway... Rainbow Dash performs the trick well, and yeah, it comes to the ending, and she wants to be a standout. And Cloud floats in front of her, did not go boom, avoids Thunder Cloud, and well, this whole scene is just a mess. Bumps into trees, anger a bunch of birds, and <sighs> in the end, she gets catapulted to the Thunder Cloud, shocking her. And she crash lands into Pinkie Pie with her really huge cotton candy. And yeah, makes the whole event not good. Although, who took note of uh, the cloud in Rainbow's tummy? I did. <laughs> it's cute. Now there's Apple Bloom, who we saw has an apple in her tummy, which obviously living on the farm, that probably isn't that big of a surprise. Mm-hmm. It's probably breakfast. But I start to wonder if ponies don't have unique emblems to their stomachs. At which point, I propose that we grab a, a unicorn and electrocute them. For science! Do we know any unicorns, by the way? Like, let's see. Um, We do have Toftera. He's a unicorn, right? I thought it was a turtle. No, oh, that's his Pokemon. I think in his pony form, he is one. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Or could be Toon Critic. Soon creates the Pegasus. Ah, okay, not then. So, I think Totera. No, Totera's a Nerf pony. Oh, rat. Uh, Firebrand, Da Wilsonator, uh, Muscle Voice of Reason. Pony. Yeah, there's a few experimental guinea pigs we can use. Yeah, so we just have to strap them to a table, electrocute the bejesus out of them. <laughs> yeah, it'll be all for science! For oh, science! Uh, what, shipping or what? Electrocution. <laughs> 
Okay. Hmm, who else could we add in? We could add in British Ninja, FNGR. Oh wait, he's a change like. Yeah, but anyway, continuing on. <laughs> After Rainbow Dash finishes her visit from the nurse's office, Spitfire chews her out. Obviously, I mean, what stunt was she pulling? Why did she do it? And yeah, Rainbow Dash just explained that she, she wants to stand out. She wants to be out there. And well, if she doesn't deserve to be a Wonderbolt, then take her out. And everybody's in full support saying, What are you kidding? We want you to be a Wonderbolt. You're the first candidate that we want to if there's an empty spot. And you're there. We wanted to, we had to break the legs of your predecessor just to get him out. <laughs> uh, no. No. Yes, yes. <laughs> but now they explain the situation of hey, it's just playful banter with the names. Uh Clipper, do you know why I'm called Clipper? I clipped my wing on the first day of training. I flew into a flagpole and clipped my wing. And uh, is that uh, was he also looking at some cheerleaders when he did it? I don't think there's cheerleaders in the Wonderbolt Academy or the Wonderbolt. I I don't know. The Quest for Your Game says otherwise, or in this case, Rainbow Falls. Yeah, there's a sporting event. No, no, not sure. But if you think about it that way, wait, is it? No, oh, that's the Cloud Day Flyer. That's not fair. <laughs> but anyway. Then we have Flatfoot, was it? Uh, I, I don't remember, but once called uh, Flatfoot because she landed on Spitfire's foot and so on and so on and so on until Spitfire explains what's her name and oh my, it's a very terrible one. I wonder what it is. Gonorrhea. <laughs> uh, no. Gonorrhea? Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> You don't want to know that nickname. Yeah, no. I really don't. And yet you're bringing it up. Yeah. Why are you bringing it up? <laughs> well, I don't... Uh... So, after explaining all of this, Rainbow Dash kind of, oh, that's why you do it. Oh, that means you love me. Yeah, we do. And you're still a Wonderbolt. And yeah, but now you're suspended for two weeks. Yeah, have fun. Now clean up the whole mess you made. Oh, I think it was for a full month. Really? Month? Two oh, months? Yeah. Huh. So I think month of two months, I don't remember. We end off with Rainbow Dash cleaning the whole mess she made and asking her friends asking her if she's feeling alright. And Rainbow Dash's reaction is yes. She's feeling awesome because I'm a wonder bolt. And we end with a splash screen of her being there. It's a really good splash screen. It's really good. I'm on a bolt. I'm on a boat. Can't you see that I'm on a mother flipping boat? <laughs> Bolt. But anyway, episodes ends and yeah, we are on a high note where Rainbow Dash is Wonderbolt. <laughs> so how do I even break this down? Break it down. Well, we have hit a new dynamic. Dash is now a Wonderbolt. She's going to, <laughs> actually from several episodes, we know that she is going to Reference that she's a Wonderbolt several times over between spa treatments, visiting fr family of friends. And she's going to be like, yeah, Wonderbolt's pretty tough. Wonderbolt's a hard time. Wonderbolt, Wonderbolt, Wonderbolt. Oh, Dash, I do believe you're trying to fish for a compliment. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, yeah, but still, she deserves it. With the things she's g gone through just to become a Wonderbolt, yeah, she deserves it. But still, she's doing her best to become... Well, a Wonderbolt. And she did it. And with all the future episodes that we're going to talk about, about her being a Wonderbolt and whatnot, it's going to be interesting. So with that, I think final thoughts are in order. In order. In yes. What, what order? My order? I think, Silver, you go first then. The Hippogriff order for Conquest of Wild? I know. Nine. So this one, I've gone back and forth. And on the first viewing, I did not enjoy it very much. I will say that it, I became more sympathetic and understanding towards it on subsequent viewings because one very real aspect of socialization is teasing. I, if it's not blindingly obvious, I do, te I do tease my friends. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh yeah, you, you tease us all right to insanity. <laughs> Especially poor Eliora on the last podcast you were in with Toon Crick. Holy crap. 
Well, wait, wait, you see what I do when I draw fan art of her and Zephyr Breeze together. Oh, my. You really are going to draw that? I'm considering. <laughs> Do it. Do it. But I also huh. thinking I'm also thinking of a day outside a mall where a friend and I were waiting for other friends to finish uh getting dropping off their car for service. Out comes this guy running with several police officers in chase and he gets tackled. Ooh. Uh by a more heavy set cop. And we're just sitting there Watching police emerge and praying that that our friends didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh my god. And mm. I I have the windows rolled down and I hear one of the cops say to the guy who made the catch, "Nice job, fat man." <laughs> and I just oh thought, god. and I just thought, okay, that's something I wouldn't say to a person, especially when they did well. But it's a different world, and the Wonderbolts are a different world. They operate by different rules. So understanding that idea and perhaps the message that not all hazing is cruelty, that you have to be aware of the context within. However, as a bridge from the layman to this world, the episode didn't provide enough context to do it effectively. It's gotten to the point now where apparently I have to have a military brony justifying every action in the episode just to say it's a good episode. I don't think everyone has that service. Honestly, um, background talk here, like behind the scenes kind of thing, behind the curtains, as they say, an invitation was sent to Firebrand about coming onto this review. Um, having his point of view on this episode would have done wonders for understanding his point of view, the military's point of view and whatnot. He couldn't make it. Yes. I was going to say, Ashley Silver, do you plan on having a Josh Corcher in your closet every time you don't get a military reference <laughs> as a translator? Uh, somehow I feel like he'll he'll find his way to me. <laughs> Long and the short, it's not my favorite episode. It's not my favorite Rainbow Dash, to be sure. It's a little disappointing, in fact, that she, she spends so, so much time dragging herself through uh, shame and cringe when really this is an episode that should celebrate this achievement in her life as it tries at the very end. But all in all, it's not a bad episode. I think it's just got a bad rap. Let that one sink in for a minute. Uh, but ask yourselves who wrote this episode. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, and Dave Rap. Rappy? Was it? <sighs> That's hateful dog. No, oh, uh, seriously, like the guy's name. You just got Step up to gangster style. I'm hardcore. I'm from the suburbs. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Seppi, what's your opinion on this? I'm getting the Ebonics translator out oh. to sum up my feelings. Oh, that's what getting wet. Yo, just to sum it up, this year episode was terrible, you dig? Okay, that's all. Really? That's all I have to say. Oh, uh, wow. Well, okay. That ain't no bala. But anyway, uh, if that's really it, uh, it's my turn then. Um, I like this episode. It's... It's one of those things where I kind of understand the whole situation. On the first watch, I like it. On the second watch, I like it too. Would I say that this is my favorite episode out of the seven episodes we've seen out of season six? Nah, it's it's in the... How would I put this? If I were to give it a score out of ten, this would be around a seven, a solid seven. It's not bad, but it's not great. This episode be a negative 1,000, yo. Whoa, someone's really feeling it. I be hating. Uh, but for me, I do like this episode. It's one of those episodes where, huh, this is kind of cool, but you really need to kind of forgive a few scenes just to make it work or just to not get you angry. And you need to kind of ignore a few scenes just to make you not go mad with rage. But overall, those are my thoughts on the episode. And, well, with that, the episode review ends here. And next week's episode, what are you going to do, Silver? Any ideas? I think it's time to take a little breather from just catching up what's been going on and talk about characterization, good and bad. We've had a lot oh of characters boy. come through. True that, true that. Oh boy, do I have a lot to say. So next week's episode is going to be character review? Yes, indeed. Yeah. We'll figure it out later. Yeah, we'll figure it out later with a proper title and whatnot. <laughs> we'll do it live. Yeah. 
Yay! So anyway, if you guys didn't know, this show here right now you're listening to is available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Links are going to be in the bottom of the YouTube box linky. If you click on show more, it's down there. If you have iTunes or Stitch Radio, please do subscribe. It helps us a lot. It gets our name out there. Please do subscribe to the iTunes and Stitcher. It's fun for us to know if you're listening to us live everywhere on the go. You can hear to Sefi's really bad Ebonics. Really bad. Uh huh. Yes. Sefi's weird Ebonics. How could you, Sefi? <laughs> yes. Don't be hating, yo. Don't be hating, no. I sound more black than you do. <laughs> That was uh, racist. No. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> so anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I beat the white chocolate sapphire hearts on yo. <laughs> and we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing episode of the NBA Show Reviews. See ya. Bye bye. Bye. Damn it, you stole my thing. <laughs> oh yo, dog, why did she stole yo? Performance anxiety, I think. Oh, no, no, you don't want that.